Hello, welcome to Hope and Prayer for Our World. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor of Biomeda United Methodist Church. I'm so glad you joined me this after this today. It's the day after the mass shooting in the elementary school in Texas. Today I was watching the news conference, the press conference that the governor had along with a panel of other officials and elected officials and and they were sharing what they had learned had taken place by the gunman prior to the actual shootings, the messages he had posted on Facebook, and then recounting the events at the school. And then they focused their interest and their conversation around what the mayor and the sheriff of Uvalde, Texas, had said was most important, the mental health of the citizens and the law enforcement personnel who had all been involved in the tragedy yesterday, and the need that they all have to move forward in light of the tragedy. Nineteen children and two teachers perished. Many others were wounded. And we pray that they will be healed of their wounds. We pray for the city of Uvalde and all the citizens and all the law enforcement personnel that have been involved. And for the leaders of the city and the state of Texas as they move forward, providing the necessary mental health resources that are available and being made available for everyone in Uvalde and the surrounding area, anyone who was part of or experienced it through their family or some other way. They named a list, a long list of resources and even included one specific phone number that people can call. And all of these are going to be made public and available in the hands of the people of Uvalde and all of the law enforcement personnel. And just as the, you may have watched it, but just as the governor turned it over to the Lieutenant Governor for remarks, a man walked up and started shouting and pointing his finger at the governor and the entire panel. You couldn't hear what he said. My first thought was how disrespectful to get up and break up a press conference. Why not wait until they ask for questions? Anyway, the man was escorted out. And then they showed that he was still waving his arms and shouting and carrying on and talking about why they weren't focusing on asking why they weren't focusing on the availability of guns to be so easily gotten into the hands of young people 18 and up. And that he thought that should be the focus immediately, even though he probably hadn't heard them say that they were focusing on mental health issues first, and then they would address the availability of guns. The people need to come first, in my opinion, so that they get the help that they need to move forward. And as they provide that help, then they can move forward. It's up to them. It's not up to me or my opinion. But my heart is breaking for the people of Uvalde, Texas, and all of the law enforcement personnel that have been involved in whatever level of the, of the tragedy. I've been praying that today, I've been searching scriptures to find comfort for me, comfort that in my heart I can share through God to the people of Uvalde. I found a scripture that tells us to not be discouraged because God is and his love are with us wherever we may be. Listen to that scripture. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That comes from the Old Testament, the book of Joshua, the first chapter and the ninth verse. And then as my mind has been running to it ever since I heard about the shooting, 
my mind runs to the 23rd Psalm, which many of us have committed to our memory, and many who may be listening have not heard it or committed it to memory. Listen to these words from the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, that gives me peace. I've been seeking peace since I heard the news. I imagine you have been seeking peace in some way as well. But we can remember the words of Jesus when he came to the disciples and they were hiding in a locked room. The doors and the windows were locked and he appeared before them and he said, My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Jesus Christ, peace. The peace of Jesus Christ is with us every moment of every day. May we all remember that. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we have so many questions for which we have no answers. Console us in our grief for the people of Uvalde, Texas, and for all those who came to help as the tragedy unfolded, leaving death in its wake. Oh God, comfort them, shelter them, Shelter them in their sadness, comfort them in their sadness, and reassure them of your everlasting love and hold them to your heart that in their helplessness they, they, they feel the peace that you have for them as they face their pain. And God, grant them that they may feel your comfort, your strength, your courage, your hope, your peace, and your love surrounding and sustaining them now, now in their pain. May they feel your love and comfort and strength and courage and peace and hope surround them now and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. May the peace of Christ be with you today and always. And may God bless you until we meet again. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor of Biomeda United Methodist Church.